Hey guys, really excited to show you this new Sub37 sample base product. So you might have already seen the presets uh, for this product already up on multi-tracks. Now these presets are for the actual hardware, uh, the Sub37, uh, the subsequent 37, and I think even the subsequent 25. Uh, but if you have any questions about whether your hardware Moog synth works with these presets, just email us at support at multitracks.com and we'll let you know. So a bit of a backstory as to how these Moog Sub 37 presets came about. So Ben Tan, who's one of Young Free's main producers, he contacted me asking me to create a bunch of Moog Sub 37 presets based off um, popular songs that he really liked the bass sounds on. So he sent me these songs, I uh, created them on the Sub 37, sent them back to him and he put them on his own Moog Sub 37 and he's already used them on a bunch of Young and Free songs uh, so far. So that's kind of how the Moog Sub 37 presets came about. Um, but I had a bunch of people um, ask me if there was a version uh, for main stage uh, or a sampled version of these presets that you didn't need the actual hardware to use. Um, and so that's what this one is. Um, this is the main stage version, but it's also available in a contact version and an Ableton version. Um, but I'm just going to obviously show you it in the main stage version. I'm going to treat this walkthrough video as more of a kind of a tutorial showing you how to get the most out of these patches rather than just go through and aimlessly play all the patches. If you want to hear all the audio demos, they're already up on multi-tracks um, so you can go through every single patch and listen to them in detail. But I just want to show you kind of some tricks and tips on how to get the most out of these patches, especially in uh, main stage. Um, there's some really cool things that you can do um, to really make these patches come alive. So, like I said, this is the main stage version. I'm actually using an older version of main stage with the EXS24 player, but um, if you're on the latest version of main stage, you'll have sampler instead of the EXS24 player. Now, everything I'm doing in the EXS24 player, um, you can do in the sampler version and more as well. So, um, I thought I'd do this version just in case people are still on the old version, but it's easily translatable um, to the sampler player as well. Um, I've exported all of these patches as individual uh, preset patches as well, so you don't have to use it in this template, you can just import them into your own template. So just to sum up these patches quickly, you've got a bunch of 808 bass sounds with prominent kind of 808 attack um, going into like a sub bass. Um, there's different amounts of uh, attack to those. Actually, I'll quickly play them for you uh, so you can get an idea. Um, then we've got attack drive with um, different amounts of overdrive. We've got bass 101, which was used on a bunch of Hillsong Worship albums in the past. Um, one has more attack to it. The version 2 has less attack. Um, you got fat bass. I'm going to play some of these because they're really cool, just to quickly give you a demo. Pulsing bases. And then a bunch of really usable kind of sub bases that you can even stack on top of other, or below, I guess, other bases um, to give you a really nice low end to your bass sound. Anyway, that was like the fastest kind of walkthrough patch demo I think I've done. Um, but the purpose of this is to show you how to get the most out of these patches. So let's go back to this Glide Drive 1. Um, so as you can see here on the actual channel strip, um, what you're hearing is just the sample. There's no added overdrive. The overdrive on this is uh, Moog Analog Overdrive that's been captured into the samples. Um, and I just love um, real analog overdrive. There's just something about it compared to a digital um, plugin that you try to put on top of it. So I tried to capture clean versions and overdriven versions. So you've got a um, wide variety of bass sounds in this uh, library here. So I just want to go through now and show you a bunch of tricks and tips um, on how you can get the most out of these bass sounds and actually create a bunch of different tones and varieties just from a single patch. 
So right now we've got just the basic glide drive one. Now if you turn on this wide button um, or even just manually turn it on and off here, it adds um, a really quick convolution reverb um, because the Sub 37 is actually a mono analog keyboard. So to make it stereo you need to put something else on it like a delay, um, but I felt like this was kind of the best option. A really short convolution reverb makes it wide, makes it a little bit fatter too. Um, so that's what it sounds like with this on. So that reverb is available on all different patches, so you can add that to them to make it wider. Um, you've got a filter, which is actually, I should probably map this, <laughs> which I haven't done. Um, if you are going to use this template, even just to kind of preview all the patches, just go to layout, go to assign. Um, I've got a Korg Nano controller in front of me. Uh, click on all these things, move um, the sliders. I'm just quickly mapping these. Uh, it's going to make it easier for me to demo it. So this is mapped to the low pass filter, obviously. Let's turn the uh, wide reverb plugin on as well. And we've got ARP. Just adding a pulsing ARP thing that's synced to uh, the door tempo. And obviously volume is pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's open up the XS24 player and show you a few little tricks and tips you can do um, to manipulate the sound. First of all, you've got uh, four different low-pass filter options. By default, it's on the 6 dB, um, but you can make that more drastic by um, going towards like the 24 dB low-pass filter. It's really cool because the Moog Sub 37 actually has all four of these filters on it, so you can kind of treat it like you would if you had a Moog Sub 37 sitting in front of you. Um, the 24 is more steep, so it gives you a more drastic low-pass filter, and that's um, the 6dB is a lot more subtle, so um, I use 6dB more for pads, um, but for leads and like bass sounds where you want something really prominent when you move that filter, um, go towards the 24dB. So this is it uh, with the 24dB. And the 6dB to give you a bit of a contrast. You can hear it kind of lets more um, of the top end through, it's not as steep. Um, you might want to muck around with the uh, resonance. You can try turning this fat knob on, adding some overdrive to it. It's already pretty overdriven, um, but just adds a little bit more subtle overdrive. Um, but if you do add more overdrive, just back off the volume um, because it does add a lot of gain to it. So just by um, changing up a few of these parameters, you can get it um, sounding a lot more aggressive. You've got um, more uh, low-pass filter definition when you start adding in some resonance on top of that. So you can get some really interesting um, bass sounds by doing this. Now let's put that back to what it was. I think I forgot to mention that um, the mod wheel will also affect the low-pass filter. Um, you need the cutoff frequency to be um, less than 100% for it to do this. Um, for example, if it was 50%, it doesn't close, it only closes half, and then if you have it full, it's going to close completely to zero. You've got glide, which you can turn up and down. So that's obviously just the speed of the portamento glide between notes. Um, a little thing I like to do sometimes is change the pitch bend to 12 semitones instead of uh, 2, so you can do kind of a whole octave pitch bend thing. You can obviously change attack and release depending on how fast you want the sound to come in and how uh, quickly you want it to release. Um, what you'll notice is with some bass sounds, um, the attack has a little bit of a click, which you might actually want to make a defined bass sound. Uh, for example, the bass 101 has a little bit of a click at the front. That's why I've added uh, version 2, which takes out that. But you can obviously also um, manually change that. Thank you. 
just with the attack and release. Uh, really simple, you probably know this stuff, but I thought I would cover all of my bases. Um, what I'll do quickly is show you the EXS24 player because um, even though this is a screenshot, I just want to uh, mention where that fat button is. So if you go back to this, that's actually not in the sampler version. Um, it's incorporated into the low pass filter settings. So this is a screenshot, so I can't click on it and show it to you. But if you do um, use the sampler player, if you click on this, you'll notice there's fat versions like LP6 dB fat, um, 12 dB fat. There's other versions as well inside this one, which the XS24 version doesn't have. Um, but that's basically um, what they've done is incorporated that fat button into the low pass filter settings. So if you're wondering where that is, uh, that's where it's located in the sampler player. So just to wrap this up, I just thought I'd quickly show you the pulsing bass sounds. Um, or at least one of them anyway, and show you what you can do with them. Um, so both of these, Pulse Bass 1 and Pulse Bass 2, they sync to the door tempo, which for me is 120 at the moment. I can make it wide if I want. Um, let's open up the XS24 player. This is a good way to show you the different low pass filter settings and how they compare to each other. Um, the 6 dB will give you a, a more subtle pulse, uh, whereas the 24 dB, because it cuts out all the top end, gives you a more prominent one. Um, you can do the little tricks that I showed you before. If you want to, you can add more resonance. Um, but I kind of like it with the resonance off. And then if you go to LFO2, you've got control over the um, divisions. It's obviously still synced to 120, but you can have it quarter notes or eight notes or whatever you want, basically. So you can create that kind of dubstep um, thing where you're going between two different tempos. Um, and if you wanted to, you could actually map that to um, a knob or slider and have real-time control over that if you wanted to incorporate that into like a live set where you're going between uh, fast and slow, uh, like I showed you there just with the mouse. But anyway, um, that's a walkthrough video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped you um, with some new tricks and tips on how to use the EXS24 player. Um, if you want to hear all the audio examples, obviously just go onto Multitracks, check out the product um, and the audio examples there. Um, but yeah, once again, thanks for watching.